Hi, I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. I wanted to take a second to ask you a favor. If you're enjoying this episode, please remember to subscribe to it on whatever podcast app you're using, or leave a review if you can. Any little bit helps. Also, if you'd like, you could go to my website at tomraiswebsite.com and sign up for the email list, and you'll get information about each artist that I talk to, and you'll get alerts as to when different episodes are coming out. Plus, you'll also get a call out when I'm looking for artists to schedule interviews on the show. So go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and subscribe to the show there. And also, thank you so much for listening. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's episode, I talk to a mixed medium artist who is based in New York. Their work actually involves a lot of... Uh, they described it as as dust, as uh, powdered materials, as a lot of things that basically are delicate to work with and also very easy to mess up. And But their work is very, I want to say visceral. I talked to a few seasons back, I talked to an artist who was really into visceral drawing. Uh, and I may be completely misremembering the medium, but I remember the way that it looked it seemed that way to me. And these are charcoal sketches and different types of installations they've done. And there's even one that we go into great detail about, which is called the white room. And if you check out the person's Instagram profile, it's a pretty fascinating piece that they did. Uh, we talk more about that, but here is the episode starting right now. <music> My name is Chelsea Ramirez. I am a visual artist and I live in Brooklyn, New York. So how long have you lived in Brooklyn? I've been here for now almost almost 10 years. Okay. Um, yeah, I moved here straight from graduate school. I went to graduate school in Louisiana State and I didn't even walk. I put on my show, I packed my bags and I moved to New York City. <laughs> So I've been here for about 10 years now. Yeah. So what, why did you uh, make the change to go there and why didn't you go there in the first place? Why did you, go, why, why did you well, start I did. up there? I, did. I graduated. So yeah. I just didn't, I didn't attend the graduation ceremony. I knew that I oh. wanted to move to New York immediately. <laughs> so I, I did my, my thesis defense and I passed. And as soon as I got the pass, I had already been in the process of making the move. So I just, came on over and I've been here since. So. Okay. Were there already opportunities waiting for you there or you were just like, that's where I'm going to go try things out? Like, how did that come about? The whole, um, this is where I'm going to go. Yeah, no, I, I, I did a summer session here. Um, I think the, my second summer in graduate school. And from there is when I knew that I wanted to move to New York. Um, and so I spent my last year just keeping that in my mind. Okay. Um, but I didn't have anything really set up. I just, I knew a couple people out here. I am a little bit familiar with New York because my, both my parents, when they um, moved to the U.S., they both moved to Queens, actually. So oh. we would come visit um, and it just felt right. And so I just kind of had the plan in my head and just sort of manifested the, the move. And I, and I just kind of, yeah, I just ran with it, really. Okay. What was the summer show? Tell me about the, what you did for that that show um i did a summer session a drawing marathon at the new york studio school that is in greenwich village so it was basically uh, a session where it was about 12 hours of drawing a day wow um, and you would have nightly critiques so there were about like 15 hour days um and i loved it it was so much fun um and it was it was really nice just to be in the city even though it was so busy uh, I would walk to Washington Square Park and have lunch in between the the class. It was just it was literally just twelve hours of drawing from life models and then Washington Square Park for lunch um, for the summer. And so um, yeah, since then I kind of just was was like this is sort of the energy that I want to have, not even just for my studio work, but for kind of like my my life. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I just I. I picked up and I moved and it was, it was really quickly, but, um, I'm, I haven't wanted to be anywhere else since basically. I was under the impression that the summer session was, yeah, that makes sense. You were doing like actual sessions. I don't know why I thought it was like a gallery showing. That's. Oh no, just... <laughs> no, it was, yeah, it was, it was a school session 
I guess in a sense, but yeah, it, like, I mean, it was really more, there was a lot of work with it, but it was really, for me, this session was learning and drawing in a place that really kind of cultivates arts. Um, Louisiana is great and I love it. Um, New Orleans is an amazing city um, and the school really kind of fed you know, what I'm doing now. Um, yeah. But it's a small town, you know, there's not many places like New York City when it comes to that. And so I wanted to, I really just wanted to kind of give it a try. It's it's interesting you say that because I do, I mean, I've been to New Orleans or New Orleans, however, I always say it wrong. Um, <laughs> and man, when I was there, I was just like, it, it was one of those uh, vacations where you're like, should we leave? Do, do we stay? Yeah. What, you know? I loved it there. And, uh, and I'm not saying you didn't, I'm just, when you said that, it's like, yeah, it's very artistic, but you're right. It is more, even as a touristy place, it still felt very spread out. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't hustle and bustle, which yeah. sometimes is very, uh, intriguing, very, very in inspirational, you know? And yeah, that's, that's interesting. I didn't, I wouldn't have pieced that together. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, New Orleans is amazing. I love that city. It's, oh, yeah. it, it, it was such a, I'm so glad to have been able to live there for a little bit and experience it. And it's funny that you say that because we talk about hustle and bustle and that is what New York City is. And basically yeah. what I've done for the past two years, two and a half years in my, my practice and my studio has been to try and eliminate the idea of hustle and bustle. So even mm. though I'm here, I'm like really trying to separate that way of life Um while being in the middle of it at the same time, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that leads me to, uh, for people listening to this, um, how would you describe what you do? Tell me about the work that you're creating or style or, you know, just tell us a little bit about, let, let us visualize with our mind what it is you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my work is, I call them drawings, um, even though I use, various materials um, I use and I do that intentionally because I feel like there's an intimacy that's attached to drawing um, and for me drawing has a lot to do with me just thinking um, and so the works are they bring in different materials I've been using a lot of materials that have to do with um, softness and slowness which is what I was saying about uh, like not re not not getting stuck in the mode in which um, I am hustling the, you know, the work is being made and I'm definitely working in the studio, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to kind of uh, take on different ways of doing that, that don't, that kind of move away from the ways that people and the way that we're kind of told that like, we have to exist in the world. And so the works are really soft. I've been using dust, a lot of dust and earth pigments. So I bring in like um, iron oxide, um, I use some tea and coffee, some, I make some walnut um, ink myself, and I kind of also just ground up pigments and I make li uh, like diluted washes mm -hmm. that are just kind of like built up layers I have to do very slowly um, to kind of bring up these images. And so there's a really long, slow process that I've really embraced, actually, because I, I don't like, especially living in New York City, feeling like I have to produce things. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, I guess it's been in, in a response to the way that social media has come up, especially for artists and the way that um, just in general that we're, we've been kind of told to, to hustle um, and yeah. to produce things all the time. And I guess I, I'm trying to bring back the human part of, of me um, and life into the work. And so I do a lot of figurative work, but the work is figurative. Um, but they're they're very ghost-like and it's very intentional. And I'll bring in the dust pigments that I have and I'll just brush them on the surface really delicately. And I have to stop and I have to like almost hold my breath when I'm doing it. Um, so it doesn't just like, you know, blow away everywhere. And I try oh, You it. mean <laughs> literally hold your breath? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like okay. get really close to it. Um, and so it's, it's actually been really great. It's been this like big unveiling of the way that I can make marks and think about drawing in different ways and bring in parts of the way that I want to exist in the world into my practice as well, because I don't think that, I mean, they're obviously very connected. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've been working on this series. I, it's really, I, I use this term called radical softness. Okay. 
I talk about my work and it's this idea that like being vulnerable and having that grace kind of like simply existing as you are is a is a form of like socio-political resistance and protest because it goes against all the different ways that the world is making is imposing all these like constructs on you and what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to be and so the drawings kind of come from that idea that they're kind of just like they're they're ghost drawings that are like appearing and disappearing at the same time and they're just they're just being um so that's kind of like that's that's the process right now and all the stuff that i've been thinking about in the studio okay um, and how did you how did you start working in this manner how did you actually start working with these different mediums and finding this particular style was there something that inspired it an artist or uh just something happened and you move forward from that like where did it begin um, I think it's just, it was like an evolution, really. You know, when I draw and I've always really, charcoal has been, the material charcoal has been this. this charcoal? Charcoal. Oh, charcoal. Yeah. <laughs> charcoal. Okay. Yes, charcoal. It's, it's been this, yeah, it's been this material that I've always just kind of, I've, I've developed a really kind of intimate relationship with. I, I love, okay. <laughs> I love using charcoal, I think of it as the way that I think now, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to work out ideas, if I'm trying to put something down to respond to, I use charcoal because I, I feel like I can understand the ways that I can make marks, the way that it feels in my hand. And so that, you know, the, the different bodies of charcoal, we have you know, charcoal drawing sticks, we, I have grounded charcoal, I have big chunks of charcoal that I use. And so I, from there, I kind of took that as the sort of uh, catalyst of like, what other materials can I can kind of bring in and try and get that same sensitivity to? Mm -hmm. um, and what other materials have different bodies to them that I can manipulate and understand while working on the surface of something? And so I started from that. I started from a basic, like, I wouldn't say basic, a more formal drawing approach and how can I make drawings what do I like about making drawings and what parts can I really push myself when I think of drawing and so I've been thinking about the abstract qualities in figure drawing um, and what that even means and for me that means the sort of unpredictability of the materials um, what does this dust do it blows away it doesn't necessarily stay on the surface and so the drawings then started to respond to that like how can I draw something how can I reveal an image of what I'm trying to say um, with the idea and the material all at the same time? Okay. Um, it, I just kind of took off. It became like different, different ideas started to overlap. So one of the, one of the biggest um, quotes or poems from, it's from Toni Morrison um, poem, which talks about flooding, how the Mississippi River floods. Um, she talks it as a as a way of remembering, and so attaching that sort of ethereal idea of memory to the soft dust that sits on the surface was is sort of where I'm at right now, and how I can intertwine them. Okay, how long did it take to? I guess the best way for me to put it is wrangle this style. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's something you can pick up right away. It seems like it's very fragile, and it is. yeah, <laughs> so so. <laughs> You know, how, 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 did, yeah, how did you start working with this? It seems for me, it would just become a big mess and I would spend five minutes on it and that's about the end of it. So, <laughs> so how did, how, how did you start to maintain this sort of style? Um, it just came, you know, there's a lot of tests, right? There's a lot of moments where I have, I just put things out, it's a lot of experimenting and that's just to understand what something does. And then there's also learning that, um, I can't control a lot of it. Um, yeah. And so there's there's a part where I've learned to either leave something and respond to it or, you know, completely remove it because it didn't work. Um, but I started kind of, I started working this way in the fall of 2021. Um, I had some ideas going and then um, I was invited to do a show. So I had a solo show in downtown Brooklyn for the following year and so it kind of pushed me to just like sit every day and figure out these materials and figure out the drawings and how to kind of how to move forward and really pull like flesh out all the ways that i want to 
to create the, these works. Um, and the work has changed so much, you know, that was last year. And yeah. um, from then it's, it's just, it kind of caught, like I, I'll say that I'm still wrangling with these ways of making. Um, I'm still figuring out the different ways in which I can do these drawings on different scales in different ways with different materials. Even um, I started to bring in iron oxide now for pigments, um, hmm. which is more of a raw earth material. Um, and that, that's something that is new within the work, but um, it's been, yeah, it's, it's still going. And I think that's what makes it really exciting. I, I don't see an end to that process, just sort of variations of it as I, as I learn new things. Okay. And it, so I'm picturing having looked at your work and there's mixed mediums in it and there's uh, you have lace that you wrap around things and stuff like that. So that process, as far as adding the mediums, do you do that first? I'm always fascinated with uh, mixed media, mixed mediums uh, just because I feel like one has to come after the other, or I don't know the, the whole using different stuff. It's like you draw with a pencil, you're drawing with a pencil. That's the end. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe later on you'll scan it and color it on the computer or something. But yeah, what? <laughs> what's, I mean, yeah. How do you maintain that? How do you go? Okay, and here's where I'm going to put the lace. Here's where I'm going to put the uh, the charcoal, and here's where I'm going to draw. Like that's the part that always. It, it's much like collage work. For some reason, I get it. I I see people do it, and I'm like, oh, that's how they did it. And then I try it, and it's like, I don't know how to do this. So <laughs> just give me a little insight onto, I mean, how do you even piece that together in your head or do you lay it out? Like, how does this all work? Um, it's both, right? Like okay. the, the way that I start something and it's funny because I do these, you know, sort of elaborate, really soft drawings, but I don't really sketch. The sketch is actually on the surface itself. Okay. But when I do think of sketch, I think of, I make marks. That's it's, it's I mean, if you look at them, you would have no idea what you're looking at. It's more like formal, compositional things. But I start with the word. Um, I start with a small sketch, and I start mm -hmm. with the the color, like what material. So I've been using glue a lot. So I think mm -hmm. of what kind of glue. Um, or do I start with the, the more brown rust material first? Is that what I'm trying to highlight in the work? So I just have those. Literally, it's like a, a line. Um and then the rest is just kind of process. Like I, there's no one way that I start a drawing. Um, it depends on what I'm trying to really reveal. Is there an emotional part of it that's I want to highlight? Is there a specific formal idea? So I've been I've been trying to I've been interested in in revealing a lot of hands as gestures. Um, which I've moved away from in some drawings. So it really depends, but I look and I sit with my drawings a lot. Um, I, I have a home studio and so it's part of my routine to basically live with my, with my work. So there's a lot of looking and just staring and responding to it and thinking, and that kind of goes hand in hand with how am I going to start something? Um, what did I learn from another drawing and what did I do even accidentally? on one drawing that I really liked and yeah. I wanted to kind of like yeah. figure out how to do that. Um, so, but when it comes to the washes, I mean, I, I just have everything out, you know, everything is just available to start. Um, if you come through my studio, sometimes like there's just kind of dust everywhere. Um, right. There's things that are open. There's, there's uh, soup containers that I've kept that just have labels of like uh, this type of blue, this type of blue, this type of blue, this amount of water. Um, so it's really just, it's, there's no one way that I do it. A lot of it is just doing it, but mm -hmm. I do, I do look and I sit with the work a lot, um, which I, which is something that I do very intentionally, which has to do with being really slow, um, or slow in a sense, um, so that it feels intentional and not so robotic. Um, and mm -hmm. so that way there's, a, there's, yeah, like I, I'm one person and I have to like figure out what I'm doing. I can't just do. And your studio is in your home, you're saying? Yes. Okay. I uh, work from home. How much, how much room does that take up there? I basically um, live 
in a studio. <laughs> so, yeah, like my 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 studio setup is that the emphasis is on studio and the rest is uh every day okay. space I go through, you know, but um like I have like this is one wall and at all of the walls right now they have canvas or work on them. So like all right. Yeah. Now here's an interesting question then. So knowing that uh, there's a piece that you did called The White Room, which yeah. I thought was fascinating. I enjoyed looking at that. And, and as I looked more into it, I'm like, oh, it is what I think it is. And so these are living pieces that are in a room, but you made them look like a sketch with uh, flour and other types of materials. Now, one, being in a home studio, how did that come about? And two, <laughs> uh, what was the process for that? Because I really enjoyed that piece. I thought it was really cool because it does look from the photos. It's like it looks like a charcoal sketch, but it's actually mm -hmm. real living items. So mm -hmm. tell me a bit about that piece. Well, I did that piece. That's that's a site specific installation um, at Louisiana State University. And I mm. kind of I took. Yeah, I took over a whole room. Um, we had an extra gallery room that the students could use and I just kind of told everybody that I was going to make something in there for the the six months that I was in there um and it's it's even I even painted the floor and the ceilings even though they told me not to and I painted everything white um but basically it was a it, it was a revolving sort of ephemeral installation what I it, it was rooted in the ideas of home but also it was a experimental drawing project for me um and so what I did was I collected all these objects that you would find in the house. There was bottles and cups and chairs and tables. There was uh, jackets, um, bags, shoes. Um, and I would just set up still life arrangements and I would draw them directly onto paper. Um, first, just a straight charcoal, um, no color. And... Um, and I would give myself a timer and I would be, I would do a drawing in about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on what the arrangement was. Oh, really? And so it was, yeah, it was a straight, just making a, a, a life drawing essentially, but doing mm. it in a way that ha that was really focused on mark making. And then from that drawing that I did, which was very abstract, I would t take that arrangement and I would paint all the objects. They were all painted white and I would, mirror the marks that I made, the gestural, you know, like sort of swooping marks back onto the objects themselves and set them up with lights and photograph them so that they looked just like the abstracted drawing I just made. And I did that. There was about nine renditions of those. And then once I finished that, I would paint everything back to white. So the very first drawing and the very first uh, 3D drawing, charcoal, like sculptural drawing, they don't exist. They didn't exist after that. I would photograph them hmm. and then I would start again. And then the very last one was the way that the, the final image was shown was I put all the works on paper around the wall on one side. And then I did a whole drawing on the other side based off of them as a mirror. And then I kept those three dimensions. I took pieces of those drawings that are on the wall and I made all the sculptural objects live within it in a way that mirrored that too. So you, you would have to stand at specific ang angles where the mark the line lined up let's say on the shoe mm -hmm. would make that line drawing so that it looked just like a line drawing looked very flat and i would everything was white so it was such a it was such a jarring experience to walk into the room it, it was so bright yeah and we walk in and people i i the last in the last iteration I invited people to walk through the space and you could just see their footprints because there was just charcoal dust everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a six a six months just evolving and such and I basically lived there. I would lie on the floor, I would sit at the tables, you know, <laughs> like um, You make it sound like you were being punished. <laughs> no, it was just I had, it was very immersive. It was yeah. very immersive and I had to be in it because it was it was really about looking and you know, it was really important to shift something like a quarter of an inch so that that line lined up with your viewpoint so that that bottle, that cup made a line drawing mm -hmm. as opposed to just being that little skew and even to the lights so that the shadow of the charcoal was the shadow and not the three dimensional shadow from the object. Yeah. So you, so, you, so you had light coming from like all different directions to point at it. So there would be no natural shadow. Yes. 
Huh. I I picture yeah. I don't I don't know if you you'll even know this reference, but I picture that scene from Willy Wonka where they go into that big white room where they have the machine that can transport big things across the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. It, it, like that. Yeah. It just I just picture that. Um, <laughs> I don't know yeah. Why, yeah. why I even brought that up, but that's what it made me think of. <laughs> In- yeah, but like that that installation that was not my home studio, um, but. I would hope not. It's, it's very, yeah, it's, it's very well. It'll give you a sense of like the charcoal dust. So I don't need yeah. the same amount of charcoal dust because I'm doing a different body of work. But that idea of like the footprints of people walking through the studio—that is kind of how the work is because there is a lot of dust here that still kind of exists, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so it's it, it kind of does carry over a little bit. I will say that you know I, I do a really good job of maintaining it, <laughs> right? Not just in my living space, but. Um, that that idea still you know is very it's very important to my drawings because it has to do with touch you know the the way that i like to work with charcoal and all these materials now is that i don't want to remove the fact that i'm a person and that i made these Mm -hmm. it's it's sort of like a a tracing of where i've been on the surface of the works and how my hand has moved across it so it's a very like visceral gestural approach to drawing that i am completely sort of all in for with my work. When did you start showing your work publicly? Um, I started in college, you know, just, okay. um, yeah, I, I actually, I didn't, I wasn't somebody who grew up drawing. Um, I can't say that I, you know, as a young child, I was making drawings everywhere. I played sports. I was uh, very interested and I, that took up a lot of my time, which I, I think um, really does fuel my studio practice. Cause I, I, I take it in stride as, you know, doing something repetitively to learn and being sort of constant in the studio. But yeah, I think I, I just, I, I started drawing in college, my first drawing class. And I kind of really, I just wanted to be really good at it, I think. And it kind of just like kept going. But I think my first show was maybe when I was 20, I think maybe 20. Yeah. So I okay. probably think show. Yeah. And with the work that you do, and this is because, I mean, we choose to do these things not only because it inspires us and we want to we want to make things, but we'd also like to make a career out of it. So with work like this, and when I meet um, uh, mixed media painters and like the charcoal thing that you just told me about, the, the white room, the live drawing with the photographs. So things like that, fascinating. And I love it. And but then it's like, well, how 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 do we make money doing this? And not that it's all about money, but we would like to, you know, make a living doing it, not have to do it in the evenings because we go to work. I don't have Mm -hmm. to describe the concept of actually wanting to do art for a living, but how, how do you, uh, I mean, are you selling things? Are you, uh, putting work out there that's for sale? Do you have a different thing that you do artistically? So how, how do you actually not be a starving artist as they call us? (laughs) Well, I think that, I mean, it's a it's a really tough thing, right? When 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 you want to make ambitious, especially more installation work, it's it's a choice. It's a choice, and I think it's really about um, really considering what you want as an artist. I mean, of course, like a a, a canvas work will be easier to sell than maybe one of those uh, three dimensional shoes that I made. Um, but it just depends, you know. And I think I think you can do both. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's a there's levels to um being able to create this project that's ambitious and um really is conceptual approach and yeah like highlights what you want and then you know you have to figure out the other parts like what what is maybe a a physical object that somebody would like to have um i don't know if there's a right answer to that but what i know for myself (laughs) is um i do work um i i work a full-time job actually and I'm, I'm really um, in support of that because there is a way to do both. Um, I have managed to support myself with a job that allows me to be really experimental and thoughtful in my studio. Oh. And I, um, yes, like the, the works are for sale and I would like to, of course, sell my work. Um, yeah. And until I reach that point, I I am supporting myself in the best ways that I can, so that my studio practice continues. You know, it's 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 still about it. It's all about it. Yeah. Uh, 
and it's about doing what you have to do. And I think that there's a, a, a taboo almost, or a sort of, um, wall in which people don't want to talk about having day jobs as mm-hmm. artists or that maybe you shouldn't or that you I, that you're a, a part-time artist and I think that that's that's not true because it what I've learned about having my time and you know be so not limited but like uh structured because of my job is that I have to be very thoughtful and very intentional in my studio mm-hmm. and it's taught me to be very um productive and figure out what I really need to do for myself, and what I want for my work. And so I, I, I work just, I work in the studio for hours at a time. I work nine, eight hours a day. And then I work about six hours at night every yeah. day and then long weekends. So there's no part time to it. It's just, a, it's a different schedule. Right. Um, and that's why I have my home studio because I've been able to figure out a way to, keep my studio practice very consistent and be really structured in it. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I don't know, you know, it's very difficult. I think it's, it's a choice and there are, you, you also, you know, align yourself with communities and people who support parts of your practice um, that make you feel, you know, like doing something experimental is, is for you, the, the studios for you. And so just, it's doing what you want um, and then figuring out how to, maintain that basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I've had that conversation where people will say like, you know, how much would you say you do? You know, I'd, I would go to my day job and then I would still be making things and they'd go, well, how much time do you do that a week? And I'd be like, well, I'd do it at night. And they're like every night. And it's like, pretty much. Yeah. And it's like, well, isn't, you know, that's too much or don't you take a break? And it's like, well, I mean, what else am I going to do? Watch TV? You know, like I'm working during the day. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, I'm not denying myself a vacation. It's like I do it because it's what I do to relax. And that's what you do at night. And also it's like, well, if I don't, then I can't blame other people for it not being done and me not getting anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you do, you set yourself up and to, to do what you need for that, you know, and that's what I've worked really hard to figure try and figure that out because it's still an ongoing process, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's I, I definitely feel like working doesn't take away from my studio practice. That I've I've learned to kind of work in my studio much more thoughtfully because of the amount of time that I have. Yeah. And now you also have a website. How long have you had that how long have you been running that site? Um I, I started, I mean, <laughs> the website is interesting. Um, I have to update it. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've had it for a couple of years. I think I've had it for about maybe five or six years now, with just continuous updates. And um, I think social media has changed the idea of oh, yeah. having a website too. So um, I do, I have that. And I also um, only post my my drawings on my social media. And, um, I, and I write a lot about my work. So Usually when I post something, I write a lot about the the context of the work so you can get a sense of it instead of just um, showing an image across the board. So you can under, I want people to really know where I'm coming from because there's a lot of thought that comes into it. And so it's really deliberate for me, but the website does have that too. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think for about five or six years now, I've had that website. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The writing part is, I have the opposite problem with that. Uh, I will go to put something out and then I'm like, and I had all this thought and process behind it. And when I put it out, I'm like, I don't know what to write about it. What do I say? What, what is this thing? How, how do I not sound? I, I just, that's my, that's my kryptonite right there. I is mm-hmm. when I have to explain the piece. If someone's talking to me, I'll explain it till I get to the point like now where I'm like, why am I still talking? But the, <laughs> if I have to write something and put it down, I'm just like, everything I write sounds idiotic. Um, I, and I can't explain it anymore. And it's like the whole process was explaining how to do this. Why could I not say it after the fact mm-hmm. anymore? So that's a tough part for me. I always struggle with that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I always liked writing. Um, and I like just coming up with the way that the, the words that I use to describe my work. Um, like I said, I sometimes just start with the word 
right now the main word for me is this word that is is river river um, river yeah okay. so the word river is kind of this connecting thread that i thought of um throughout the works and it's a metaphor and i think of the river as more of a verb and it kind of describes this force this movement that um is embedded in people um there's this sort of dual idea when we when we think about river we think about water where there's like a, a sensual like calming of it with the waves crashing that sort of brown noise that we listen to mm-hmm. um, and then there's this idea of like violent flooding and torrential downpours that water has too so there's it's both um, and so when I think of river I think of this moving force that combines these this these two sort of characteristics of water um, and they're they are embedded in people and it kind of reminds you of what it means to be human you're more than one thing at once and um, to be strong like flowing water you can't stop flowing water hmm. um, it's being both it's not being just one and yeah. um, one of the analogies that I think of is that there's a lot of rivers through a lot of the construction and historical like man-made ways in which cities have come up or just dwellings is that rivers will change their course if they have to based on sort of our human interference and that i i love that idea is that they don't stop they just sort of move around so the river is this thread that kind of goes through um my work which is this metaphor that goes through the work and it has to do with uh, just like that social protest I was talking about. It was just like yeah. existing and being and constantly moving. And that's where the blue comes in. Okay. And with this work that you're doing, is there, are there any like projects coming up or things you're working on or uh, other things in the future that you'll be doing that you could tell us about the uh, things to expect of the work that you're doing? Um, there's a few things that are that are in the works. I mean, I have some some personal projects that I want to oh. move on. Yeah, that there's new ways of 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 making and materials that I that I really want to do. Um, and I'm hoping to um, configure another sort of wall drawn installation with the dust. So that's something that is in the works in in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of brings back the the wall drawings and the the movement um, within an installation, but with these works specifically. Um, and um, I think that yeah, it's a lot of personal projects right now. Um, trying to with the with the winter coming up, it's good studio time. So I'm excited right. to work various scales. I have a right now. I've been working on this drawing that's about twelve feet by ten feet. So oh that, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that's happening. Um this in the works. So it hasn't been revealed yet because it's very, very preliminary. But um I I've definitely have have moved into more experimental ways of making that I'm excited about. Um have you ever thought of or or have you ever done uh kind of documenting the way that you do create these different paints and the different mediums and the things that you're mixing together and how you create the, have you ever just done posts or videos or anything showing how you do that? I have actually, well, in in a way I made a video for um, the solo exhibition I had in downtown Brooklyn in 2022, which is a little bit of both. It's more of just the work in the show, but it's me talking about, um, just the, the process a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I also did one the year before, which has a little bit more process stuff that was for the series called Lucy Agua, which is this, a series of 10 portraits that um, is a reference to my family. Um, and I was nominated to do a small video for the US Latinx Art Forum. Mm-hmm. She's a series. So there's that video. Um, that's on, They're both online. Um, and, but yeah, I've actually, I've, I've been teaching myself how to use some video stuff. So that it's something that, ha- yeah, definitely has been in my mind and creating this sort of in the studio um, 
yeah, but yeah, I would I would be interested in seeing yeah. in seeing that process of making these things. I've heard you talk about it, and I can picture <laughs> it in my head, but that doesn't mean it's right. I'd like to see the actual process itself. So that, yeah, I was just curious if there were anywhere to see that kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, and if people did want to check out some of your stuff, where do you suggest that they could go see it? Um, I would say just I guess Instagram is sort of the easiest way. Um, my handle is Chelsea Ramirez with a period in front of the Z. Um, and then from there, there's links to the video, the two videos I was talking about, as well as to my website. The, all the works are there, and there's a lot of contextual information that I like to include as well. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. This has been great. Thank you.